These are affordable f1.2 ultra wide aperture APS-C prime lenses from Suri. Suri Sniper Series. They look great, they are small and light, and the individual prices of these lenses will appeal to a lot of people. Are these lenses worth buying? What are they good for? Are they any good? In this video, I'll answer all those questions and more. So if you are thinking of buying any of these Series Sniper series lenses, watch this first to find out more. Quick disclaimer, I got these lenses sent from Suri to try them out, but I was not asked or paid to say anything specific about them. So everything you see and hear in this video is my own and unbiased opinion about these lenses. So what we have here, we have 16, 23, 33, 56 and 75 millimeter lenses, all available in white, silver or black and all available for Sony E, Nikon Z and Fuji X mount cameras. The set covers a wide focal range for pretty much any shooting situation, although individually they are very well priced altogether. It all adds up, but buying them all as a set has its benefits. Firstly, the optical quality and color contrast across the range should match and it does. Not that it really matters with lenses in this class, in my opinion, but these deliver close matching results for sure. Each focal length has got its purpose, but some of them are more versatile than others. 16mm, 24mm full frame equivalent is perfect for landscape, for wider field of view, for shooting in tighter spaces, and in general, when getting as much as possible in the frame is required. 23mm, 35mm full frame equivalent is perfect for landscape, street photography, environmental portrait, portrait in general, and as an everyday lens for everything. 33mm, 50mm full frame equivalent, standard focal length, portrait, product, street, the most versatile lens out of these in my opinion, and my favorite focal length of all time. 56mm, 85mm full frame equivalent, telephoto range offering superb subject to background separation, portrait king. It compresses the perspective, making the background seem closer to your subject than they really are. Perfect for creating that professional look and really blurred backgrounds and bokeh. You need more space to step back though when shooting with this lens. And 75mm, 113mm full frame equivalent. This is a portrait beast. Even more of that lens compression, more subject to background separation, but you really need lots of space to step back for taking full body pictures of people. Probably the least versatile lens from the set and one that is more of a specialist tool. So how do they perform? On paper, these lenses are amazing. The size, the spec, the look, everything is right. But they all have small optical issues. That ultra wide aperture of f1.2 is a little bit gimmicky. Yes, you can open the aperture this wide, perfect for better low light performance and for that ultra shallow depth of field, but none of the five lenses deliver consistent sharp results in my test. With 56 and 75 mm, the autofocus struggles sometimes a little bit more too. When you buy a wide aperture lens, f1.2 wide aperture lens, you want to shoot as much wide open as possible. At least I do. If you do not shoot professionally, you have time to take your photos and all you do is share them on Instagram and social media, all five of these lenses will do. The results viewed on small screen are very good, no complaints. The softness really shows when you start cropping, zooming in or printing large. Is it a deal breaker? Maybe for some, but for majority of beginners, amateurs, and in generally people who do not make a living from photography or video, these lenses will be okay. Even for those who do make a living from it, closing the aperture down improves things dramatically. There's instantly noticeable difference in sharpness from f2 and onwards, very little problems from f4, if any. The color and contrast are good. As expected, there is some chromatic aberration visible, not drastically bad. Flaring is a little bit out of control too. It is all standard and not unusual for lenses in this price range. Nice bokeh, a little bit swirly, especially with 56 and 75 millimeter. Overall, they deliver really good results if used right. I started shooting everything at f1.2 with them just because I could, but then closing the aperture down just a little allowed me to have more consistent results. Video, as these are Siri lenses, you'd expect them to be perfect for video. And they kind of are if you omit the sharpness or the lack of it wide open, although that is a little bit less important when it comes to video. The autofocus performance wide open could be a bigger issue. You have to remember how much these lenses cost. They are not premium, expensive, all singing and dancing lenses. They fit perfectly in the amateur or enthusiast category, although they could be used for professional work if used right for the right job. Autofocus in video generally works 
okay. This will hugely also depend on what you are shooting and with what camera. On my Fuji XS20, autofocus sometimes just stops working altogether with all five lenses, and 75mm is not smooth focusing. It could be a little bit better. This is literally no focus breathing visible, unusual and good. 16mm is really okay for vlogging or filming yourself handheld when 75mm is perfect for a tripod steady interviews or b-roll. All five lenses have a very long focus throw so if you are going to go old school and manually focus you have more precise control over micro focus adjustments. Unfortunately focus by wire so no hard stops so it is impractical and difficult to do old school filming with them and not really suitable for photo focus for example. I don't think these are the lenses for a serious filmmaker anyway. Perfect for a hybrid shooter who wants a budget friendly matching primes for photos and video. These will do that well. Build really nice looking lenses. I got a black version here with carbon fiber which I think is the most classy looking but you can also get white or, or silver. All have a filter thread of 58 mm apart from the 75 mm which is a 67 mm. They are all very similar size and weight although there's too much weight difference between 16 mm and 75 to say that you could use them all on gimbal without the need to rebalance every time you change the lens. The weight varies a little between different mount versions too. These are approximate weight values. Wide and textured focus ring, slightly soft when turned, okay for lenses in this class. No switches at all, no stabilization or weather sealing. The uniform look and build as to the overall feel of the set. For the price they feel a little bit better than similarly priced competition. Price and value for money they are budget-friendly primes, each costing around £300 or dollars. You can save yourself a few pennies if you buy them in sets, either 23, 33, 56 or 16 and 75 or all five together. As I said before, if they are used right and for the right job, they are not that bad. Certainly good value for money if you do not concentrate on their shortcomings. Can you get better for the same price? Doubtful. Certainly not, not this size and not this wide focal range set, if the set is what you are after. Who they for? These lenses would be perfect for someone who wants to create that specific wide aperture prime look but doesn't want to spend a fortune. For someone creating photography or video content professionally for Instagram, the slight softness wide open would make little difference in that scenario. For someone upgrading from a kit lens, someone who is new to primes or even photography and wants affordable lenses to learn with, to experiment with and still be able to achieve decent results. For someone who knows what they are doing, this is someone who sees past the f1.2 widest aperture and understands that there is more to a lens than that. These actually perform much better, more consistently when closing aperture down even just a bit. They should have made them f2 and there will be much less to complain about. Conclusion, these are not perfect, unfortunately. Very well priced ultra wide aperture APS-C primes that lack that oomph. If you want lenses that are perfect, sharp and reliable, then these might not be for you. If all you ever used is a cheap kit zoom lens, this will be a world of difference to you. Better, exotic and challenging. Challenging is the right word here. They can deliver great results if you have time and patience to challenge yourself. The results shot even wide open, which are not 100% sharp, will be absolutely fine viewed on smaller screen or on social media. Before buying any of these lenses, you have to ask yourself a question. What are you going to use these lenses for and how are you going to use the results? For the right job, they could be okay. Okay lenses for filming with consistent color and contrast, consistent enough across the range, small and light enough for gimbal work on any APS-C camera. Also could be used on a full frame camera as with a video you get the APS-C crop but no loss of resolution when filming with them. Are these lenses for you? Are you a person who likes to be challenged? Are you a person who is just not interested in clinical looking images? If so, any of these really could be okay for you. The price makes them accessible, individually, even a spur of the moment purchase. Altogether, even though they are not perfect, they give you a very wide focal range for the price of one premium lens. But do you really need that premium and expensive lens? It's nice to have one, but not everyone can justify the high cost of premium lenses. I wouldn't use these lenses for paid work like events or weddings. Not consistent results, not consistent autofocus performance is a problem here. For everything else, anything that can be repeated, they would work with a little bit of extra care. In one sentence, to summarize in one sentence, good, but could be a touch better.
And this is it from me. Thank you for watching and see you next time.